Hi, I'm Dr. Kelly Junta. Hi, I'm Dr. Christy Haynes. Hi, I'm Mallory and I am an LVT at Blue Ridge Equine Clinic. Hi. I'm Cheyenne and I'm one of the Earliesville receptionists. John Kern and I'm a local farrier in the Charlottesville area. We teamed up with local farrier John Kern, who is also a certified journeyman, for our segment of the 2020 Fall Client Seminar. In this video, journeyman John Kern explains the different types of shoes he likes to use, while Dr. Junta will discuss the different injuries they can help with and how they are diagnosed and treated. With your veterinarian's technology and expertise, along with your farrier's knowledge and skills, your horse can be properly and appropriately treated. Horses wear shoes for, they want to protect your feet, their hoofs aren't growing quick enough, they need more traction, so those are your three major ones. Then when we start having injuries and abscesses, we, we build onto that. But, but for everyday shoeing, these are the shoes that you want your horse to be in. Everything else is, is we have problems. So we have the, a plain stamp shoe. There's no traction device to this. It gives the horse its closest to his natural foot. We have a three-quarter fuller shoe, so our nails are into the fuller groove, and this fuller groove gets filled with dirt, and dirt on dirt makes excellent traction. Third type of shoe we use a lot of are rim shoes. It's got a, a fuller groove from heel to heel. Uh, you get a lot of traction, and you get a lot of movement to the foot. We have a three-quarter fuller that's rolled on all, all the edges. This, this helps a horse that's got to make quick turns on the front end. He can pivot whichever way he wants. And then a very other common one is an aluminum shoe. And this is for our hunters and race horses. A little bit lighter on the front, a little less fatiguing. It goes off and should to be trim a horse. The higher the caliber of a horse, the shorter the shoeing cycle is because a sixteenth of an inch can make a world of difference on how a horse moves. Trimming a horse, same way, but you'd like to keep it where you're only balancing the foot every four to six weeks rather than cutting off a tremendous amount of hoof and we're changing horses' angles all the time. Mm -hmm. So I would say you know, anywhere from four to six weeks normally for shoeing and or trimming. It goes in, in between trims, you know, we start seeing thrush, we start seeing broken walls, we start seeing broken bars into a foot, um, maybe toe cracks because you get more toe, and, you know. So the shorter you keep everything, the nicer the feet stay together. The difference between a domestic horse and a wild horse is a wild horse has to forage 20 to 40 miles a day. Our little guys you know, go out in the back half acre and they have enough food in one day and they can, they can live for a week off in, in the wild. So, yeah. And in the wild, they get a bad foot, they're gone. So by taking just a standard horseshoe, your farrier can deal with everyday uh, gait issues, movement issues, the way a horse moves his legs. So if your horse is landing beautifully nice and flat, you don't have much to do, just trip. But we hear a lot of times that a horse trips on his front end. So we put a little roll into his toe. So now when he hits, it's soft and he can break over nice and easy. Same horse, sometimes we rock her the front toe. So when he hits, hits that, the breakovers move back a little quicker. A lot of people will talk about breakover, you move a breakover back. That picks up his foot quicker. Back down the horse, if he's overreaching, and he may square his toe off. So we're forcing his foot at this point, and hopefully he won't overreach. It's on the front end. Now on the back end, we sometimes we need to have a little length underneath the back of our horses, so we use an extended heel. Well, that's the foot. 
and it's just going to leave his foot on the ground a little bit longer. And sometimes we need to have length underneath the horse for more support. This is a trailer, so we're trying to keep the horse from hitting himself. So we're, we're getting it so when he hits the ground, this hits last and just turns his foot. So as he leaves on the ground, this is the last piece of, that leaves the ground and it turns his foot out. Uh, I know we're going to be asking about traction devices. So some horses need extra traction. Whether you're a hunter or a jumper, depends on the, uh, the arena surface or if we're going across country, if it's muddy, if it's hard. So we have these studs which are removable and we can put short ones in or we put tall ones in for deep mud. So we can put grass ones in for running on grass. If you're into driving horses, some fox hunters like it, they like to put boring on a heel. This is used a lot more on hard tack, so hard roads going across river. Um, it's, it grips well, it keeps the shoe from wearing down there, it keeps the horse from sliding. Mm -hmm. so most common ones we find are laminitic horses. We have suspensories, collateral ligaments, deflexor tendon injuries, abscesses, puncture wounds. So there's a lot of things that we can modify a shoe or make a shoe to, to fit. So the most common one that everyone probably hears about is Horses that are found or have laminitis. This is a hard bar shoe and it's applied to the foot and it's going to cover the frog and it's going to give digital support. So, because of the front part of the foot is no longer viable, we need to support the caudal part of the foot. And the, Using the hard bar shoe, the foot can stand on it, so we're supporting straight up through here. That being said, the, they make soft ride boots, which is something we can get a horse into within a few hours. We can get medication into a horse, and we can save or salvage a lot of these horses with never having to put on this type of shoe. If you suspect laminitis or founder in your horse, this is an important time for the vet and the farrier to work together as a team. Straight bar comes across the back. It adds about 20% more ground surface, so it dissipates a lot more weight. Yeah. Sometimes they have some sore heels or sore corns, so we make a onion heel shoe. So that covers the sea of corns. That really heals soreness too. We can use an egg bar on the back of our something they have. It's also used for suspensories or injuries. This is one we just used recently. A horse came in that was tangled in a fence and he had no, it didn't look like a piece of hoof. <laughs> And so we, we had to get him so he could stand on his foot. So we built the shoe and used a, a lateral bar shoe because this was totally unusable. Mm -hmm. And we floated him like that and he walked down the aisle, not 100% sound, but he could walk down the aisle. Mm -hmm. All right, this part of the shoe board, you don't want your horse to be really half, half to wear. <laughs> These are some serious injuries, nagging injuries, or totally debilitating injuries. I'm uh, sorry, it's something simple. This is just a wedged inside, rolled outside, or it could be vice versa. That's a horse that has side bone. This is a side bone shoe. We can't fix side bone, we try to make the horse comfortable. So, once again, without x rays, we're not going to know this. I, as a farrier, can 
and you as a horse owner with the veterinarian figure out that we have some real bad arthritis in these feet and we're not looking at, hey, we can't fix this and try to make it come. We have horses that have collateral ligament injuries. So we want to support the side that's injured. So we add a little more metal to it. You can take this shoe, you can take a keg shoe, or you can hand make these with it. But it's just a way of shifting the weight to the support to the injured side. You're seeing a lot more collateral injuries now. Not that we're having more, we have the diagnostic tools with ultrasounds that we can see this. Corrective shoeing first starts with a proper diagnosis and diagnostic imaging such as radiographs, ultrasound, and sometimes MRI is really important to find a diagnosis. So here's a radiograph of a horse with both medial and lateral side bone. Side bone is ossification of a normal structure in the hoof called the collateral cartilage. Um, side bone is thought to arise from an imbalance or unequal loading of the hoof um, and sometimes can cause lameness issues. Here is an ultrasound of a collateral ligament of the coffin joint with a large hypoechoic core lesion. With an injury like this, we would recommend using a collateral ligament support shoe with the wider portion on the inside of the hoof. Now we're dealing with horses with some major tendon issues. This is a fish bar shoe, patent bar, and that pushes his foot up, keeps the tendon from totally extending, and keeps him comfortable. As we let the tendon heal, we can we can you know lower it down. This is the same design shoe, but with a removable heel. Each one of these three plates come off, so we can start here, and then next time we take one off and keeps dropping, dropping until he's totally flat. I don't have to shoe a horse. I don't want to shoe a horse. A lot of horses can live without shoes, but if they become sore. They wear their foot down. There's an injury. We have ways of, of helping them out. Okay, as the world's changed, the veterinary world and the horseshoe world is changing with us. The skill needed to do some of the, the handmade shoes is being lost, but there's plenty of ways you can do it without that. I mean, this is just a regular bar shoe, and the veterinarian wanted a little angle to it, so we just put a wedge pad onto it. So it's something you can buy at the ferry store, we can wedge up the foot and, and keep the horse comfortable. So one indication where you may need to use a wedge would be a horse with a deep digital flexor tendon injury, which can be seen on these MRI images. So this is a horse that gets a puncture wound and we have to keep it medicated and so we build a shoe for the horse we put it onto the to the hoof we pack our medicine into it and we just bolt it back up and so here the foot is cut the solid plate protects the injury and it keeps the medication in there, keeps the foot clean. Um, so how do you find it helpful to incorporate veterinarians into certain okay. horses? And I find working with a veterinarian is a very useful part of my practice. I, you're, you're looking at a foot and you go, oh, man, something's just not right here, it's not going, you know, the horse isn't landing right, no matter how I trim it. So you come in and you get the veterinary involved and we can get a medial lateral balance. We can see if there's uh, bony changes in there. So I feel if anyone's going to get a horse, I think it's worthwhile to at least get some x-rays of the horse hoof so that we have something to compare it to if and when we have a problem. Um, 
how often do you have to consult with vets or meet a vet at a farm or come into a hospital and help us out? <laughs> how often do I do it? In my career now, I do a, almost weekly I'm talking with a veterinarian. Mm -hmm. Even if it's just to call up and say, hey, I just worked on so-and-so's horse and everything's looking good. Mm -hmm. They like to be kept in, 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 in the loop. And uh, now I have no problem when a veterinarian calls me because we can talk about the issue. And there's, you know, they have the diagnostic material machines so they can tell me what they see going in there. And then I can go, well, I, I know possibly this shoe may help, this pad may help, this package may help, and we can try it. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't work, we come back a couple days later and we try something else. But, it's easier with having the x-rays or the ultrasound and okay, we know what we're dealing with, how can we make the horse comfortable and for, for help. Because we work as a team. Yeah. And yeah, they have their practice, I have my practice, we're working for a client with horses, but it comes down to all three of us are working for the benefit of the, of the horse. And the horse should be the number one reason why we're doing this. And, you know, sometimes we have to get out of our comfort zone and go, what can we do to get this horse going? We would like to give a special thank you to local journeyman John Kern for helping us with this video. John has an immense amount of knowledge that he is always happy to share with us here at the clinic, and we can't thank him enough for all that he does to help us and our clients.